Hi everyone, this is Dr. Saeed Falafini from Cal Poly Pomona. In this video, we are going to talk about finite source queuing systems. Okay, let's see what we have, what we mean by finite source model. Basically, every model we have looked at so far, um, except one of them, has assumed that there is no limit on number of customers that can come to the system. Okay, so in other words, when we look at the, the formulation for queuing system, we say whatever service time, and so the distribution of arrival time, service time, number of servers, the queuing discipline, and then here we always put infinity, infinity. And this was the size of the population, right? And pretty much for most of the systems, we look at or every one of them, the size of the population was infinite, so there was no limit on number of people that can come to the system. However, this is not the case all the time. Um, so there are two scenarios when the number of people that come to the system depends on what is going on in the system. One of them is a scenario that, for example, in a bank, if I go to a bank during the lunch time, and if there are so many people are waiting already in the bank, I just go back and I won't enter the bank. So um, that's one scenario when the customers prefer not to wait. Yeah, this is one, one of the scenarios where arrival to the system depends on what is going on in the system. Yes, yeah, so when the customers prefer not to wait for long, then the customers may look at the system and see how many people are in the system. And if there are just so many people are waiting in the system, they may decide not to come to the system and that affects our arrival rate. And this, the second scenario when we may have situations when our arrival rate is affected is that when we, when entities or yes, I'm going to call it entities, when entities which are customers or parts or entities in general that are coming to the system, are drawn from a finite population. And that's the scenario when this last assumption in the definition of a queuing, of a queuing system is not going to hold. So when I put infinity in the very last part of a definition of a queuing system, I assume the size of the population is infinite. So they can keep, they, they, these customers or entities can come to the system for as long as we want. However, if the size of the population from which these entities arrive to the system is finite, then the number of entities that are that can come to the system depends on how many of them are already in the system. If the size of the population is finite and, and if all of them are already in the queuing system, then there is no one to enter the queuing system anymore. Okay, so that's the scenario that we want to look at it right now. So those are the type of systems that we put under the category of finite source models. And actually a good number of systems, queuing systems around us fall in this category. So that's the scenario when the uh, when entities uh, are drawn from a population that has a finite size. And, um, and that's what we're going to look at right now. So as an example, so I'm going to just look at one example so that you guys get a better understanding of what type, what type of system we are going to look at. Assume we are looking at the machine repair shop. And let's assume we have K machines that are working in a manufacturing setting. We have our repair people in the machine repair shop. And then um, the machine break down with the rate of lambda. So lambda machines per unit of time break down. So that's what I mean. So the machines break down with the rate of lambda. And then uh, when a machine breaks down, it is taken to the repair shop. And then um, it will be repaired by one of the R repair people that are available there. And then the time it takes to repair a machine, new machines per unit of time, is repaired by each repair person and goes back to the facility to continue working. So basically here I can say that mean or average repair time is one over repair rate, one over mu, right? So if each one of the repair person can repair mu machines per unit of time, so the machine repair time by each one of these repair people is one over mu. That's just one over service rate. I didn't do anything 
new at all. That's something we all know. Also, let's assume that the interarrival time and exponential time have exponential uh, interarrival time and service time have exponential distribution. So in this system, I have m m obviously for in, for exponential interarrival and service time. What is the number of servers? So first, so first of all, okay, before I go, so so okay, this is my system. Can you tell me in this system? What is a server? What is the definition of a server? A uh, repair person. Okay. So those repair people are my servers. So let's say I'm going to call it repair one, repair person two, all the way to repair person R. So these are my servers. Can you tell me what is the entities that are coming to the servers to get the service? The machines. The machines that break down come to the system to get the service, get Reaper, and then they leave. They when they get the service, they're good, they go back and they are used for making parts and things like that. So we said that the machines break down with the rate of lambda per unit of time. So every time a machine breaks down, that's when they come to the system to get the repair. So the rate of, so the, the arrival of the entities or machines to the system basically has the exponential distribution because here I said the interarrival time of the machines has exponential distribution. So can you tell me in, when I say interarrival time in the real world, what is happening during the, in, in the interarrival time, what happens there? So machines come to the system when they break down, right? When a machine breaks down, that's when one arrival happens. Till that till that machine breaks down again, that's when another arrival happens. What is happening between two consecutive arrival or breakdown? So that's basically the working time of the machines. So the reason I mentioned that because if I tell you in a problem that the working time has this distribution, that's basically I'm giving you the interarrival time because if I tell you that each machine works, and let's say, uh, 10 hours before the breakdown, I'm giving you the interarrival time. Because the interarrival time, because the arrival in this system, arrival happens when a machine breaks down. So if I give you the time between arrivals, I'm giving you the time between breakdowns. And the time between breakdowns for each machine it's basically the time that the machine is up and operating. Okay, so in this specific example, this is how the interarrival time can be interpreted. So if if you get exact get questions like this, and you have something that represents the working time of the machines, just know that that working time basically is the one that represents your interarrival time because the working time is the time between breakdowns and the breakdowns are arrivals in this system okay um, okay so we have the interarrival time or working time have exponential distribution the service time for each one of the machines has exponential distribution how many servers i have in this system r r there are r repair people in this system so r is the number of servers the queuing discipline is general. I didn't change the queuing discipline or anything like that. And these two, uh, this one and this one, this one, the first one shows the size of the system, if the system can hold this number of people. And the last one shows the size of the population from which these entities are coming to the system. So let's for, first look at the very last one. Uh, we always had infinity here, meaning that there is no limit on this. We have a population of infinite size. So these people just can come to the system or these entities. What is the size of the population here? K. Because? Um, there are K machines. Because our entities in the systems are the machines. When the machines break down, that's when they come to the system to get repair. And here I said in the problem that I have K machines that are working in the system. So that's K. Okay, so the size of the population from which these entities are drawn and they are coming to the system is K. And 
there is no limit, at least nothing has been mentioned in terms of the size of the system, which I have to put in this empty location here. However, if the size of the population is K, then the number of people in the system cannot be more than K either. So simply because it can never go above K, there are K people or K entities in the system, so we can never have more than K entities in the system. So I put K for the size of the system as well. So that, for example, becomes a type of system that we put under the category of finite source system. So let's assume K equals to five, meaning that, for example, there are five machines that are forming our population. These machines can break down at any point of time and they can come to the system and R, the number of repair people or the number of servers in the system is two. And we want to see how this works. There are two servers in this system, R1, R2. There are five machines that are working in this manufacturing facility. And they are in the, working in the manufacturing facility. They haven't come to the repair shop yet. So I want to specify the scope of the repair shop so this is the repair shop or or our system which i'm going to call it. so this is our the repair shop this is our queuing system and um each one of these machines what we said here is that um the machine have uh, the machines can break down with the rate of lambda which means each one of these machines can break down with the rate of lambda lambda times per unit of time so each one of these machines for example break down break down once a month, things like that. So I have the lambda, which is the rate of breakdown for each one of these machines. Remember for a queuing system, I always want the rate of arrival to the system and the rate of the departure exit or departure from queuing system. So I need those for the queuing system to be able to analyze it. Right now, all I know is that these machines, these red machines, M1 to M5, that are working in the manufacturing facility, each one of them can break down with the rate of lambda. And each one of these repair people in the system can provide service with the rate of mu. So each one of these can provide service with the rate of mu. So for example, each one of them can provide can provide service to three machines per, per month or one machine per day and things like that. Okay, Each one of the repair machines has the rate of service of mu. Okay, so I know these things for each one of the machines and each one of the repair people. However, I still don't know the rate of arrival to the system and rate of departure from the system, the green ones. And to be able to analyze this queuing system, I need to know the rate of arrival to the system and the rate of departure from the system. So let's see how we can define those. First of all, tell me in this system, in this example, if I wanna draw a rate diagram, remember we put the number of people in the system or the number of entities in the system. What are possible values for the number of entities in the system? So what is entity here in the system? When I say entity, what does it, what do I mean? Machines. Machines. So what are the possible values for number of entities in the system? Zero through five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So zero means what? Entities. All machines are broken. They're all running. Yeah, exactly. It's when the number of entities in the system is zero. That means all of the machines are working and none of them is broken. When the number of entities in the system is five, that means all of the machines are broken and none of them are working in the manufacturing facility. Okay, so this is what basically this means. So now let's develop the rate diagram. So I want to specify the rate of arrivals and the rate of the departure between these different um, states. So if I'm at the stage zero, meaning that the number of machines in the system is zero, meaning that all of them are here in the facility working, what is the rate by which I can go to one, meaning that one arrival can happen to the system. So I can go to one state one, meaning that there's one machine broken and is in the system. So if all the machines are out, working perfectly what is the rate of arrival to the system each one of them can break down with the rate of lambda would it be five lambda it would be five lambda so this is pretty much as if you have let's say three um, hallways and each people are coming from each hallway with the rate of 10 people per hour let's say 
and you want to know the rate of arrival to the system. So the rate of arrival to the system and arrival to the system can happen from any one of these hall hallways. So the rate of arrival to the system will be 30 people per hour because when we get 10 from each one of these hallways, at any hour, potentially we can have 30 people in the system. So that's why here we added all the rate of uh, breakdown of any one of these machines, which is basically the rate of arrival to the repair shop is lambda. So that then the rate of arrival to the repair shop is five lambda when we consider all of these machines that are working. How about this other scenario? So when we go from state one to state two, state one means what? State one means one of the machines is already broken and is in the system. So there's one machine in the system and my system is repair shop. So when one machine is broken, so let's assume the first machine is already broken. So this machine is out, is already in the system. Then what is the rate of arrival to the system in that scenario? Four lambda. Four lambda. If, we, if, if two machines are already broken and they're already in the system, then there are three machines that are working outside. Then the rate of arrival to the system is going to go to three lambda and then to two lambda. And then if four machines are already work, are already in the system, so four machines are broken, then the rate of arrival to the system is going to be lambda. If, if, and with the rate of lambda, I can go to five machines broken and all of them in the system. So now let's look at the rate of departures or the rate of service. So if there is one machine in the system, when the state of the system is one, one means there's one machine in the system. And this one machine, when it goes to the queuing system, to, the, to our system, this machine is not going to wait in a line, right? It just immediately goes to one of the repair people. So what is the rate of service or what is the rate of departure from the system then? New. New, because one of the servers is working, the other one is not working. Uh, what if the rate of, what if we are in a state two, meaning that there are two uh, machines in the system to get service? And obviously, when there are two machines to get the service, both of them go to repair, repair person one and repair person two. So both of them go to the repair people. None of them stay in the line. So both these repair people are working. What is the rate of departure from the system in that scenario? Two mil. Two mil. But if the state of the system is three, meaning that there are three machines that are broken and are, are, and, and are in the system, what is the rate of exit from the system in that scenario? Three as well. So when there are three machines, when the state of the system is three, which means three machines are broken and they're in the system. So when there are three machines in the system, where do they go? Okay, so there are three machines coming to the repair shop to get the service. That's all we have. So both repair people are idle. So one of them goes to repair person one, one of them goes to repair person two. What happens to the third one? Or it's going to wait in the line. This is the system, right? This black box. It's the border of our skewing system. So one of the machines goes to repair person one, one of the machine goes to repair person two, and one of them just stays in the line till one of these repair people is done and is going to pick up that machine and is going to perform the repair. Yeah, so what is the rate of departure from the system then? Two mu. Two mu, because... There's only two. Yeah, because the, this machine is working and it, the rate of exit from this machine is mu. This machine is working as well. The rate of exit from this machine is mu. So if both re repair people are working, the rate of exit from the system is at max two mu. And how about if the state of the system is four, meaning that there are four machines in the queuing system waiting to get repair. Two. And the same for five. If there are all of the machines broken and they are in the system to get the repair, still both repair people are working and the rate of departure from the system is two mu. So that's basically how the system works. Um, and as you can see, here is exactly what we said. The rate of the arrival to the system, five lambda, four lambda, three lambda, two lambda, and lambda, the rate of arrival to the system is not fixed. For every other system we looked at so far, always the rate of arri arrival was lambda, no matter how many people were in the system, right? But this is not the case here. The rate of arrival is not fixed. It depends on, on the state of the system. How many people are already in the system that affects the rate of the arrival. And that's basically what we mean with the finite source models. If there are only five machines that they can come to the system, the rate of arrival to the system depends on how many of them already are in the system. So in this system, um, traffic intensity rho equals still lambda over mu. 
and then uh, pi j, the formula for city state probabilities, um, is there are two formulas actually. Uh, one of them for j from zero all the way to r. Okay, so r is the number of servers from zero entity in the system to r entity in the system. The formula is j k. That's combination rho to the power of j pi zero and if j equals to r plus one r plus two already all the way to k then pi j is going to be this notation combination of j from k is basically what you know probably from the statistics is k factorial over j factorial k minus j factorial how do you calculate 3 factorial? 3 times 2 times 1. So basically for k factorial, 1 multiplied by 2 by 3 all the way to k. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so as you can see here, for me to, for us to be able to calculate pi j, no matter which formulation we use, we know k, obviously. We know j, that's pi j. We know rho. We know r. We know everything in this formula except pi 0. That's the only thing we don't know, as always. And I have to calculate pi zero to be able to calculate pi j in this formulation. There is no closed form formulation for pi zero. If you want to calculate um, pi zero and then uh, consequently pi j, we have to just use the um, the fact that sigma pi j j from zero to k j number of people in the system, right? We just say that number of people in the system can go from zero all the way to k right so i can use the fact that sigma pi j j from zero to k equals to what one one that's the sum of the city state probabilities which we know always equals to one so uh, we just have to use this fact calculate basically calculate all the pi j's add them together put them equal to one and then find the value of pi zero and then put the value of pi zero back in the formula for pi j and calculate the pi j. So basically that's how this is going to work. And then there is also no simple formula for calculating L, L, Q, W, W, Q. So we just have to use the definition of this, um, of L, L, Q and so forth. So L, if you remember, is the number of entities in the system. So if I choose J to show the number of entities in the system, I multiply the possible values for number of in the entities in the system with pi J, the probability of having that number of people or entities in the system, and I just add them for all possible values for J, right? That's just the definition of L, right? If you remember from the very, very first system when we calculated L, that's the definition that we used. The only difference was that over there in the very, very first system that we looked at, Instead of k, we put infinity because the number of people in the system can could go from zero all the way to infinity, but this is not the case here. So we have to just use the simple definition of L to calculate L. For calculating LQ, if I have number of people in the system, what is the number of people in the queue? So here, for example, and let's go back to our system here. When there are zero machines in the system, what is the number of entities in the queue? Zero. When there is one machine in the system, what is the number of entities in the queue? We have two servers here. Zero. When there are two machines in the system, what is the number of entities in the queue? Zero. When there are three machines in the system? One. Three minus two. When there are four machines in the system? Two. Four minus two. And there are five machines in the system. There are three of them in, this, in the queue. That's five minus two as well, right? So this is equivalent to me writing as J minus R, right? Three minus two, J minus R. Four minus two, J minus R. Five minus two, okay? And for the ones all the way to R, which is two, up to this point, basically the number of entities in the system is zero because everything that comes to the system directly goes to their servers. No one is waiting in the queue. So this happens up to R. 
and R in this example was two. That's why up to two, every, if the number of entities in the system is two or anything less than that, the number of entities waiting in the queue is zero. Zero, but for anything more than R is calculated by J minus R. So then the formula for number of people in the queue is going to be J minus R multiplied by pi J, right? So here also I calculate j minus r, three minus two by pi three. I calculate, it, I calculate j minus r, which is four minus two by pi four. And I calculate j minus r, which is five minus two by pi five. So j minus r multiplied by pi j, and j from what to what? From r oh. to k, right? Because for anything less than r, r here is two, right? That's what we wrote here. There are two servers here, R here is two. For anything less than R, we just said that for anything less than two, we just said that the number of um, machines that are waiting in the queue is zero, right? If there's one machine in the system, it goes to the server, number of machines waiting in the queue is zero. If there is zero machine in the system, number of machines waiting in the queue is zero. If there are two machines in the system, both of them go to the server, the number of ones waiting in the queue is zero as well. Only if we have three machines or four machines or four, five machines, anything greater than R, anything greater than two, that's where we are, that's when we are going to see some machines waiting in the line. So that's why here, in terms of number of people in the system, for if, if number of people in the system J is anything less than R, the number of people in the queue is zero. If the number of people in the system is R or anything greater than R, that's where I start seeing some machines or some entities in the queue. So J equals from R. So that's the formula for LQ. And then the, for W and WQ, we just use the little formula. L equals to lambda W and LQ equals to lambda WQ. And the only thing that I want you guys to pay attention to is that, remember for lambda, what is the definition of lambda? Is lambda the rate of arrival to the system or the rate of entrance to the, to the queuing system? Lambda is always the rate of entrance to the system, right? So entities can arrive with any rate, but we have to see how many of them can enter the system. The same for this one as well. And here we saw that the rate of arrival to the system is not fixed. I can just say the rate of arrival is lambda. The rate of arrival is not fixed. It's different. And it depends on the state of the system, which we define here. So to calculate it, lambda as average rate of entrance to the system, I have to calculate lambda. I'm going to call it lambda star. Okay, so put lambda star. So lambda star basically is the average of all of those arrival rates that we saw in the rate diagram, which is sigma lambda j pi j, um, j from zero to k. And here I use the term lambda j because I'm calling this as lambda zero, lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, and lambda four. Just notation that there is nothing specific. Lambda zero is five lambda, lambda one is four lambda, lambda two is three lambda, and so forth. And that's why here you see lambda j. Basically, lambda j refers to all those lambda zero all the way to lambda four. And this equals to lambda k minus j pi j j from zero to k and finally it, ha it can be shown that lambda star equals to lambda k minus l when we do the calculations this is the lambda star that we need and that's the lambda that we need to put in the formula for lq and l to be able to calculate w and wq so basically, these are the formulas for this type of system. So L and LQ are calculated using the, the just the original formula, the definition of L and LQ. Then we calculate lambda star using this formula. Then we calculate 
uh, WQ and W using these two formulas. And then uh, we also know the formulas for uh, phi j's. And we just have to use this fact that the sum of the city state probability is equal to one to find pi zero and then put the pi zeros back in the formula for pi j and find the probability of pi j's. Uh, 